Hello and welcome to our All Laid Good Friday Reflections. Together we will be journeying from Palm Sunday to the Cross with readings and pictures. The Blue Egg Donkey Little Donkey Matthew 21 verses 2 and 3 and 6 to 8 He said to them Go to the town you can see there When you enter it you will find the donkey tied there with its colt Untie them and bring them to me if anyone asks you why you are taking the donkeys, tell him. The master needs them. He will send them back soon. The followers went and did what Jesus told them to do. They brought the donkey and, and the colt to Jesus. They laid their coats on the donkeys. Jesus sat on them. Many people spread their coats on the road before Jesus. Others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. In Jesus' day, most people walked everywhere. Sometimes kings rode on donkeys or horses as they entered a city, and the people would stop what they were doing, and they would watch. Now on the day that Jesus rode into the city, the people were thrilled to see him. They believed that he had come as their new king to help them and to save them. The people showed their happiness by spreading branches out on the road and putting coats down. This was their way of showing honour to Jesus, much how we would use a red carpet for celebrities today. The Light's Pink Egg Silver Coins Silver Coins Matthew 26 verses 14 to 16 Then one of the twelve followers went to talk to the leading priests. This was the follow follower named Judas Iscariot. He said, I will give Jesus to you. What will you pay me for doing this? The priests gave Judas 30 silver coins. After that, Jesus, Judas waited for the best time to give Jesus to the priests. Not everyone was happy to have Jesus come as their king. Some people pretended to be happy, but inside they really were not very happy at all. They wanted to harm Jesus. They wanted him out of the way. Some men hated Jesus so much that they wanted to kill him, but they needed someone who was close to him to tell them where he would be. And that man was Judas Iscariot. He was one of Jesus's followers, but he was greedy. He was greedy for money. And so he told these men that he would help them catch Jesus if they gave him 30 silver coins. Light purple egg. The cup. Cup. Matthew 26 verses 27 and 28. Then Jesus took a cup, he thanked God for it and gave it to the followers. He said, This is my blood, which begins the new agreement that God makes with his people. This blood is poured out for many to forgive their sins. Jesus had a special dinner with his disciples, 12 of his closest friends who had travelled with him, learnt from him, listened to him. During the meal, Jesus stood up and he held out a cup to give everyone a drink. And then he said something that was really hard for them to understand. He said that the wine in the cup was his blood. Now, he didn't really mean that they were going to be drinking his, his actual blood from that cup. He meant that the wine was a symbol or picture. He wanted them to remember this special night, this special meal, and the promise he was making to them and to all people. Oh, and Jack. Praying hands. Praying hands. 
Mark 14 verses 32 to 34. Jesus and his followers went to a place called Geth- Gethsemane. He said to his followers, sit here while I pray. Jesus told Peter, James and John to come with him. Then Jesus began to be very sad and troubled. He said to them, I am full of sorrow. My heart is breaking with sadness. Stay here and watch. After dinner with his disciples, Jesus took them to a garden. He asked them to pray whilst he went to another place in the garden to speak to God alone. He began to be sad and to dread what was going to happen soon because he knew that he was going to die. Jesus was willing to die. Um, Once he said, no one takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. That can be found in John chapter 10, verse 18. You see the amazing thing about Jesus that was like no one before or after. He was both God and man at the same time. The God part of him was willing to die because of his great love for everyone. But the human part of him didn't want to experience the great pain that he would surely suffer by dying on a cross. Green egg. The whip. Whip. John 19 verse 1. When pa- then Pilate ordered that Jesus be taken away and whipped. When Jesus finished praying in the garden, the men who wanted to kill him took him as their prisoner. Then they brought Jesus to Pilate, their ruler, and he had Jesus whipped. The whip used was long and hard, and it hurt Jesus so much that he bled. Jesus hadn't done anything wrong. The men who wanted to kill him were afraid of losing power, of losing control. So they wanted Jesus out of their way. They knew that if people really believed that Jesus was the Son of God, which of course he was, that they would follow him instead of them. The yellow egg. Cockerel. Cockerel. Mark 14 verses 71 72. Then Peter began to curse. He said, I swear, I don't know this man you're talking about. As soon as Peter said this, the cock crowed the second time. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had told him. Before the cock crows twice, you will say three times that you don't know me. Then Peter was very sad and began to cry. Now, you might be wondering what a noisy cockerel has to do with the Easter story. For Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, the sound of the cockerel crowing triggered great sadness and it made him cry. Here's what happened. Peter was one of Jesus' closest friends and he once promised Jesus that no matter how bad or dangerous things became, that he would always be loyal, that he would always stick by him. Jesus could depend and rely on him. But of course, that all started to change when Peter realised that those who planned to kill Jesus might want to kill him too. In fact, Peter was so afraid that he denied even knowing Jesus. Just the evening before, when Peter had promised to be loyal, Jesus had said that this would happen. Jesus told him that he would indeed deny knowing him, not just once or even twice, but three times. In fact, it all happened just as Jesus said it would. The cockerel was still crowing when Peter remembered exactly what Jesus had said. Jesus said, before the cockerel crows twice, you will deny me three times. That can be found in Mark chapter 14, verse 30. Peter was so ashamed that he ran away and he cried. The light orange egg. 
crown of thorns. Crown of Thorns, Matthew 27, verses 27 to 29. Pilate's soldiers took Jesus to the governor's palace. All the soldiers gathered around Jesus. They took off his clothes and put a red robe on him. Then the soldiers used the thorny branches to make a crown. They put this crown of thorns on Jesus' head. They put a stick in his right hand. Then the soldiers bowed before Jesus had made fun of him, they said, Hail, King of the Jews. After Jesus had been whipped, the soldiers took branches with thorns and they twisted them into the shape of a crown. And they shoved it down on Jesus' head. And again, Jesus bled. We know that because Jesus was the Son of God, he could have stopped the men from hurting him at any time. But he let them carry on. Do you know why? Because even though he hadn't done anything wrong, he hadn't sinned. Jesus was taking the punishment for all the wrong things that any person had ever done or would ever do. And this includes you and me. The light green egg. The nails of the cross. Nails in the cross. John 19 verses 16 to 18. So Pilate gave Jesus to, to them to be killed on a cross. The soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, Jesus went to a place called the place of the skull. In Jewish, in Jewish language, this place is called Golgotha. There they nailed Jesus to the cross. They also put two other men on crosses, one on each side of Jesus, with Jesus in the middle. The soldiers took Jesus to the top of a hill outside the city. Then, using nails much larger than the ones inside our egg, they nailed him to a rough wooden cross and he died a few hours later. The Bible tells us that Jesus was stronger than any man. The soldiers couldn't have killed Jesus if he had not let them. He could have fought off the soldiers, so why didn't he? Because God loves people so much, he was willing to let Jesus be punished for our sins. The things that we do or the ways we act that don't please God. And even though it hurt Jesus badly, he was willing to do what God the Father asked. Jesus loves us too. The purple egg. The spear. Spear. John 1 verses 32 to 34. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man on the cross beside Jesus. Then they broke the legs of the man on the other cross beside Jesus. But when the soldiers came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. So they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers stuck a spear into Jesus' side. At once, blood and water came out. Two robbers were crucified with Jesus, one on each side of him. When the soldiers came to check the three men on the cross, Jesus had already died. But just to make sure, one of the soldiers stabbed Jesus in the side with a spear. It's really sad, isn't it, to think that Jesus died and that he died in such a cruel way. But we need to remember that Jesus gave up his life because of his love for all people, all sinners. This includes you and me and everyone who tells lies or steals from other people, people who disobey and let down God in any way, even like the criminals that were alongside him, even like the soldier who stabbed him. The light blue egg. The linen cloth. Linen cloth. Matthew 27 verses 57 to 60. That 
evening, a rich man named Joseph came to Jerusalem. He was a follower of Jesus from the town of Arimathea. Joseph went to Pilate and asked to have Jesus' body. Pilate gave orders for the soldiers to give it to Joseph. Then Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. He put Jesus' body in, in a new tomb that he had cut in a wall of rock. He rolled a very large stone to block the entrance of the tomb. Then Joseph went away. After Jesus died, a man named Joseph asked if he could bury Jesus. This was a brave and loving thing for Joseph to do. Remember that the men who killed Jesus did not believe that he was the son of God, but Joseph did believe and he wanted Jesus to have a proper burial. Joseph knew that this might get him in trouble with the soldiers and with the religious leaders, but he was brave and asked for permission anyway. Joseph wrapped the body of Jesus into cloth and buried him in a tomb cut out of rock, a bit like a shallow cave. Joseph went away sad. He was sad because Jesus was dead and he wondered what would happen next. Dear God, on this day we remember Jesus who died on a cross to show love for all the world and to bring hope to every situation. Help us to share that love and hope with our families, our friends, our world. Amen. <laughs>